Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am gonna be sharing how I edit my videos for Instagram stories on Adobe Premiere Pro. Roll the intro. Before we get into today's video, I did want to share a friendly reminder that the video for the song I Can't Breathe by her is still nominated for an MTV European Music Award. I was a drone operator for that video and we also already won a VMA for it. So voting is open through the end of the month. I would really appreciate it if you took five minutes out of your day to vote. I will leave a link to the website in the description below. And again, that is the video for good category for the song, I Can't Breathe by her. All right, let's get into this video. Before diving into Adobe Premiere Pro, I did wanna mention that when you are shooting for Instagram or Instagram stories, the work really starts before you even get into the editing software. So Instagram stories has a maximum resolution of 1080 by 1920, which is full HD. However, it does compress your videos significantly. So if you really want them to look as sharp as possible, make sure that whether you're filming on your drone or you're filming on your DSLR or you're shooting on your iPhone or Android, whatever it is, that you are shooting in whatever your max resolution is. So if you have the ability to shoot in 4K, please shoot in 4K resolution or 6K or 8K, whatever phones can shoot in nowadays. That is because when we are editing it and we are sending it over and posting it onto Instagram stories, it'll really keep its resolution when Instagram as a platform compresses the video and it will still look sharp the way we want it to and the way it was intended to. Um, so again, before you even get into Premiere Pro on your camera settings or your phone settings, make sure you are shooting in at least 4K um, however, if you only have a capacity to shoot in 1080p, then that will also work for these purposes. But the higher the resolution, the better the results. This past weekend, I had a shoot with a couple of friends in Malibu and I ended up bringing my drone with me and got a couple of shots of the Point Doom area in Malibu. It was a very cloudy and moody day, um, but I just wanted to throw my drone up and just get some practice shots in. And I actually really liked the way that the shots turned out. So I wanted to make it into an Instagram story just to post for fun no real purpose behind it aside from just getting some practice shots in. So with that being said, let's hop in to Premiere Pro. All right, everyone, so here we are within Adobe Premiere Pro. As you can see, I have my footage right here in my bin. This was part of a shoot, so it's, I have all my eight clips that I filmed here from Point Doom that day. Um, I can probably just scrub through one of them. My computer is really slow, so. This is like one of the clips that I want to film. This is of Point Doom, which I thought was kind of a sick clip that I got here, just kind of going over the point, and then it sort of revealed um, the Pacific Ocean, as you can see. It's a little pixelated just because I play it back at a low resolution. My computer's pretty slow. Um, this was shot in 4K at 24 frames per second. Um, so to play it back and for it to work on my computer specifically, I play it back at 1 16th of speed. But here, if I pause it, you can kind of see the whole full resolution of it. Alrighty, so the first thing that you wanna do is drag over your clips that you are looking to use. So let's just take this first one for example. Um, all right, so it has loaded here. And since this clip was filmed at 4K, 24 frames per second at 16 by nine dimensions, you'll see that the timeline itself will create a 16 by nine picture frame right here. And we all know that Instagram stories is a vertical dimension, which is nine by 16 or 1080 by 1920. Um, so what you need to do in order to switch your dimensions is you wanna go up here to where it says sequence and then you'll hit sequence settings. Um, if this does not say 23.976. I would change it to 23.976 just because 24 frames per second just gives you a more cinematic feel um, as opposed to 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. So I would reset your timeline to 23.976. But what I wanna bring your attention to is the under the video subsection where it says frame size and horizontal vertical. So this is where we're gonna be making our changes so that we can have a vertical dimension for Instagram stories. So what you wanna do 
is you'll change this to 1080 and then you'll switch 2160 to 1920 and then you'll hit enter or hit okay. Before you do that though, if you filmed whatever you filmed in 1920 by 1080, which is usually your standard HD dimensions, this might say 1920 by 1080, um, which is the same thing as 16 by nine as this drone clip, except I shot mine in 4K, which is why you saw the higher resolution there. So all you need to do is just change it here to 1080 by 1920, which is the maximum uh, resolution for Instagram stories. So once you've changed it, just press enter or hit okay and then you can just hit okay again here. And now you'll see that my video dimensions here has changed to 1080 by 1920, which is the dimensions for Instagram story. Um, so now what you wanna do is, since my clip was filmed 16 by nine and 4K, um, you want to go to your effect controls and you, underneath your scale, you want to bring it out or readjust it based on how you want it to look or you can also punch it in if you would like to do that as well. I'm going to leave that there and then if I wanted to resize this or reshape it, um, just kind of switch it over. I would probably want to switch here the uh, rotation a little bit. As you can see right here, the, my horizon is a little bit crooked so I would want to fix that. So let's see here. That looks about right, right there. That looks pretty good. Um, so just negative one. So if I had been left with any like dark spaces or anything like that, you can kind of just zoom it in there or zoom it out um, to your liking. Now I'm just kind of going to scrub through my footage and kind of see what kind of what parts I like. So I really like this reveal right here. So let me, I'm going to hit I on my Mac keyboard to set my um, beginning point of the, sequ of the clip that I want to use. And I'll hit spacebar to play through the clip. Let me see where I wanna want it to stop. And boom, I like that right there where it kind of just reveals the Malibu area in the Pacific Ocean. So on my keyboard, I'm gonna hit the letter O and that's going to trim my sequence so that it only has this part right here. And then I can either drag the video only from here or I can just grab the clip from here and it's gonna drag the sequence um, in and out points that I have already created um, over here. So now if you play the clip, you'll see that it plays back the way I want it to. Perfect, cool. All right, everyone, so we are back and you can see here that I've already edited my clips that I've wanted to use for my Instagram story. I filmed about eight clips that day this is for a bigger project that i'm shooting so i can't really show you any of the other clips but before we started the shoot i was just kind of getting some test shots up on my drone so this is just one of the clips that i really liked that was a test shot that wasn't really going to be used for anything so i decided to use it just for my instagram stories just for fun um so you'll see here that my timeline or my whole video is 52 seconds um it's all the same clip However, I used four different parts of the clip, so you can see here the different cuts. Um, on top here, I threw a little bit of an aesthetic time code that I bought from Ezra Cohen. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below to his uh, store. He has a lot of really cool details that you can kind of just throw on top of your videos to just give it a little bit of extra feel and elevation to it. So. I'm going to play it back here with audio first, just to give you a feel. So first, you'll see this reveal shot that I was uh, mentioning to you um, prior to. So I kind of just added some color to it, but in essence, it's the same shot. I kind of reframed it a little bit. Um, this next shot is of the Pacific Ocean. Um, it is a little bit laggy. Uh, excuse me, my computer is slow as I mentioned before. Um, but if you can see here, you can see the waves going in reverse. So this was actually a shot uh, filming just straight down. I decided to reverse it so now it's going up and the waves are going backwards um this is another shot of point doom just kind of reversing to show the the landscape here in malibu and then i closed it off um with this reverse shot of me just kind of coming into the pacific ocean to end the video and i thought that was a really quick instagram story just something fun to do so the next thing is to export it so what you want to do is you want to go to file and then export and then media. 
Um, here are my settings that I have. So for format, I have it at H.264. Uh, there's no real preset that I'm using, so just it will say custom. Output name, this is where you want to rename your file and decide where you want to save it to. Um, so for here, I'm just going to save it onto my hard drive, and then I am going to save it as IG story test, and then you can hit save. And then you can scroll down here where it says effects, and then you want to make sure that video is highlighted. So you'll see your width and height 1080 by 1920, which is IG story dimensions. Make sure render at maximum depth is checked off. Um, all this should kind of just stay the same. And then we'll scroll down here. And then this might say VPR, VBR one pass or VBR two pass. I always export at CBR just because I feel like it yields me the best results and it has me uh, has the footage looking sharper. And then here, usually this, if you move this slider, it'll affect your file size. So you can see here it's at 68 megabytes when it was at 10. So if I increase this to 14, it'll increase it to 95. This will bring your sharpness and quality of your clip higher overall. Um, depending on the type of project and how, like if you're shooting with red cameras or cinema type cameras, it might affect it dramatically. Dr dramatically. But for social media, and just a quick little clip. I don't think it's really worth the trade off of the file size. So I just kind of keep it at 10, um, which will keep my file size a little bit lower and it's just going on Instagram stories. So it's not too big of a deal. Um, and then you can leave everything checked off and then make sure down here, use maximum render quality is checked off and then you want to hit export. So you'll see my clip here that I just exported. It is called IG story test. So we can double click that if you just want to check it out. You'll see that it is in a vertical dimension. You kind of just scrub through it and make sure that everything that you have is to your liking and it looks pretty good to me. Cool. So the next thing that you want to do is if you have an iPhone or if you have an Android, depending on your workflow for me, I always airdrop it onto my phone, you should never, ever, ever text the video to yourself because that will add another layer of compression that will just diminish the overall quality of your video. So if you don't have an iPhone and you can't airdrop it to yourself, I'm not sure as to the Android workflow, but Google Drive or Dropbox or WeTransfer are also viable options so that you can send it from your computer onto your phone. Um, luckily, I am on the Apple workflow here, so I will just drop the video from my hard drive, I will just drag it over here. Um, this is just an example to this iPad. Um, my iPhone would be right here, so I would just drop it here. And now I am gonna bring you over to my phone. All right, so now we are on Instagram and what's hilarious is that this Ezra Cohen post showed up. And this is the guy that I was telling you about that I got that time code visualizer from. All right, so now we want to find our video so we're gonna hit the little camera and then we'll swipe up and then here it is and then we can just watch it back and just make sure it looks good and as you can see here it does look pretty crisp it doesn't really look compressed at all um, so i'm really happy about that and then all that's left to do is hit next and then we can just hit share I hope you learned something from this tutorial and your Instagram stories can now be super, super crisp. If you still have some questions that you felt were unanswered, please feel free to leave them in the comments below or please follow me on Instagram. My username is at Saul Lopez with one L. You can also DM me there or leave a question in the comments, whatever it is, I'm pretty active on there. So feel free to reach out. Again, please stay safe out there and I'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Oh.
I might just hit it through a wall. That's on my element. I like dark skins. Love a melanin. Talk, push, move, talk. When I'm stuck in it.